All newborn animals seem to be very nice and inoffensive. But could you think that this enchanting puppy will turn into such a dreadful beast? What about this snake? It's nice, isn't it? After all, it's exactly this snake that bears the title of the biggest snake of the world fauna. It's far from the most surprising transformation. You'll learn about others from this episode. Welcome to Smart Pizza. Today, I'll show you how different animals look before and after growing up. And we'll start with such a cute snake. To my surprise, it does not cause fear at all. We're all used to snakes being something huge, horrible, and scary. But can you say the same for our beauty? In my opinion, no. But it's not for nothing that they say you can't judge a snake by its appearance. It won't be long before that little thing grows up to be the most massive snake in all the world's fauna. Yes, you heard it right, it was an anaconda. The Amazon monster that grows so big it's too lazy to even crawl on land. No, I'm serious, the anaconda moved into the water because of its heavy weight. However, as you can imagine, it's only been good for her. The coloring still camouflages the snake in the water, and in terms of hunting, it is not conceded to anyone. The snake waits until the prey appears before it. Later on, it sharply kills the victim at a clear jerk. If anyone cares to know, anaconda eats literally everything in sight. It's not very choosy about what to eat. Because of its size and weight, there are legends that it also attacks people. But I hasten to reassure you it's nothing more than that. Its jaws cannot stretch so much to devour a man of even average size. And the anaconda has no venom, so there's nothing to worry about. Irish Wolfhound I don't know about you, but I did not definitely think of this creature when I heard such a scary and unusual breed name. In my understanding, the Irish Wolfhound is someone huge, covered with fur, angry, aggressive, and not forgiving mistakes. Definitely not these cute little dogs. Although, wait, I think I figured out why they're called like this. It's because cute dogs grow up to be the giants I mentioned in the beginning. The Irish Wolfhound is one of the biggest dogs in the whole world. There's a reason why, in the past, they were used for hunting big game like wolves and deer. They look very scary and tough, 32 inches high at the withers and over 110 pounds in weight, all shaggy with a creepy look. In short, they send shivers down the spine. In all their glory, they resemble either real wolves or some kind of werewolves. Any adequate person would stay away from them, and for nothing. Nature has once again fooled us. At heart, Irish wolfhounds are very sweet, gentle, and good-natured animals. Interestingly, it's not always been the case. When this breed was first bred, their inner essence perfectly complemented the visual one. It's large and formidable dogs that people had in front of them. They served their masters faithfully. As I said, they were used to hunt wolves and deer, and they did it very successfully. These dogs had incredible speed, ferocity, as well as anger to the opponent. Thanks to these three factors, Irish wolfhounds were able to catch anyone very easily. Despite this, the popularity of such wonderful dogs gradually declined. By the 17th century, they gradually began to be forgotten. The reason for this was surprisingly simple. There was much less game to catch, so there was no need to keep such a large assistant. These greyhounds were left only with the rich, even though they soon disappeared. And then you ask me, who do we see now? Well, this is the modern population of wolfhounds that was bred by enthusiasts. According to their leader, it was not possible to raise a perfectly pure breed. So it was molded literally from everything that came to hand. Scottish and Russian greyhounds, German dogs, and even rare Tibetan wolf dogs. Though who of the ordinary people even cares about it? The main thing is that the dog turned out to be an exact copy of a genuine Irish wolfhound. Their character also didn't suffer. Today's dogs of this breed are the best companions, friendly, peaceful, calm, and wise. If they were any smaller, I'd get one right away. But in the meantime, I'd rather be satisfied with a mini shark than that big dog. You may think I'm crazy, like, who would like a shark? I'll tell you, I do. At least this one that washed ashore doesn't look like a cannibal. It looks quite nice and even harmless. Except, classically, you shouldn't trust the appearance of a young creature. As soon as the shark grows up, it'll turn into a giant and incredibly dangerous hammerhead shark. Just so that you would understand how huge these predators are, 
The maximum recorded length of one such was 20.3 feet. These fish live in tropical and warm temperate waters of all oceans. They live solitary lives and hunt all kinds of crustaceans, cartilaginous, cephalopod fish, and if scientists are to be believed, other sharks as well. The eyes of the hammerhead shark are located on the edges. Thanks to this nuance, predators see 360 degrees and are always ready for anything. According to observations, their hammer, they were named after, is needed to successfully hunt their favorite prey, stingrays. Long growths on the edges of their hammer, in turn, are needed not only for beauty, there are sensitive electroreceptors that are able to detect even the smallest electrical fields. Thus, the hammerhead shark easily finds stingrays, even if they're hiding under the sand, and then they clamp down on them with their hammer and use their sharp teeth. Survival is, of course, impossible. And this is a small and cute Andean condor, a feathered bird that will soon become a huge scavenger, ready to take prey even from a dangerous land predator. It's hard to believe, but this cute and innocent bird grows into such a huge creature. As you can understand from the name of the feathered bird, it's common in the Andes. It's believed to be the largest flying bird in the Western Hemisphere. Its wingspan exceeds 10 feet, and its weight can be equal to 33 pounds. Now, multiply that by pure brutality, self-sufficiency, and a desire to feed on carrion. That's right, you've got a real Andean condor. It's not hard to guess that having wings with a span of more than 10 feet, one can't be considered an agile flyer. That's why our guest can't just take off into the sky. And in fact, the Andean condor is not in too much of a hurry to do it at all. Firstly, the pectoral muscles are not the same, too weak for frequent swings. Secondly, waving them incessantly is excessively energy-consuming. Therefore, the feathered prefers another style. It climbs somewhere higher and makes a leap of faith. Without a single swing and without any strain at all, just like a hang glider, the feathered one can serenely travel up to 107 miles, saving its energy for the eventual battle. Wolverine I bet anyone would be terrified by an encounter with an Andean condor. Anyone but a wolverine. And yes, I'm talking about a superhero now, not from the comics, but from real wildlife. This little baby that you want to take in your arms and protect will soon turn into the most fearless creature, ready to attack even a bear. But how does it happen that such a large and fearless predator grows from that baby? Actually, there is an answer. It's partly down to its omnivorous behavior. Even the Latin name of the wolverine, gulo, meaning glutton, subtly hints to the fact that it does not care who and when to eat. In summer, for example, these creatures prefer berries and small vertebrates. But as soon as the warm weather ends, it's a total mess. A wolverine can take down an enemy five times its size. In most cases, the target of our guest is the cubs of other animals. However, there are times when hunger completely overshadows reason. At this point, the wolverine can attack an adult. On the other hand, well, why not? The upper molars are turned 90 degrees inwards. This helps them bite through even the toughest parts of the body. African Wild Dog As you may have realized by now, we have a dog next. It's not an ordinary dog, but the African Wild Dog. Looking at it at a young age, you would not even think that after a couple of years it would be considered as dangerous as lions and hyenas, but it really is. Perhaps there's no secret to it, it's all purely a matter of anatomical features, personalities, and cunning. African wild dogs are not the strongest or the biggest animals, however they manage not to starve even in the harshest of times. The basis of their diet is antelope that they confidently hunt in groups. No matter how big the enemy is, these dogs don't care. When they're together, they believe in each other and successfully defeat any opponent. In addition, African wild dogs have been known to attack in groups of 30 or even 40 individuals. Imagine this pack rushing towards a lion. Would the king of beasts stand a chance? Every day this animal travels more than 12 miles in search of food and almost never return empty-handed. Interestingly, they rely on sight rather than smell to attract their prey. Sea Otter 
This is the name of our next guest, and despite its harmless appearance, it's a predatory marine mammal that consistently grows over three and a half feet in length. Yes, now it's peacefully caressing with its cubs and does not think about battles at all, but if its mood changes and the enemy gets into its clinging paws, no one will be able to get out of them. And although the paws were just a metaphor, they're not really that clingy. Nevertheless, it's really hard to get out of the hands of the sea otter. It's all about its strong teeth the enemy used to literally sink into its enemies. Despite this, sea otters are not in a hurry to challenge the first person they meet. As scientists say, they're quite peaceful. Perhaps they're such not from nature, but from the circumstances that surround them. The fact is that any wound received during a fight can break the waterproof wool cover and, as a result, lead to frostbite. Due to the lack of a large fat layer, this can have a lethal outcome. Of course, such risks are to no avail. So, otters prefer to eat sea urchins, clams, and crabs. It's funny, by the way, how they get food. For it, the animals dive to the bottom, collect it, and tamp it into a special pocket formed by the fold of the skin. Then they come up to the land, lie on their backs, and start to gradually, without hurry, get victims one by one. The sea otter will not start a new meal until it's completely finished the previous one. Aardvark To be honest, I've never met such a cute yet unusual creature before. And no, you don't have to expect to catch. This creature is really cute, both as a young and as an adult one. As you've realized, its name is Aardvark. It's a mammal whose element I would call digging. It digs in the ground and does this very successfully. Five minutes and the trench is ready. And so it goes every night and several times. For better or worse, the aardvark has little choice. It must lead such a life because it's the only way to get its main and most tasty food, ants and termites. To determine the geolocation of its future victims, the aardvark uses its loyal pig nose that contains olfactory bulbs. That's more than any other mammal. Scientists say that in pursuit of tasty ants, the aardvark can travel up to 18 and a half miles in just one night. Although, no, I'll put it another way. In one night, the aardvark can kill 50,000 ants. What a surprising, such a diet does not bore it a bit. The animal successfully eats up to 132 pounds to 175 pounds in weight. I'm sure some of you may find the aardvark a little too big, but believe me, if that's the case, it means you haven't seen any really big creatures yet. And one of them is definitely the northern elephant seal. This seal seems tiny and cute only at the moment of its birth and a short period of time after it. And then the monster grows to more than three and a half tons and 13 to 16 feet in length. The immodest size is accompanied by a violent temper powerful jaws, and sharp tusks. They're necessary for them to become the only kings of the beach. In addition, northern sea elephants are characterized as very dangerous and aggressive. There are regular fights between males, for example, and they're extremely violent. The main motive is the mating season and the hierarchy they want to establish. All this time, northern elephant seals do not eat or drink. They only fight and survive on the very supplies they've taken care of in advance. On the chest and neck of adults, a lot of battle scars can easily be noticed. And accordingly, the more marks, the more experienced and stronger the individual is. I suggest that you don't get yourself worked up by these frightening creatures and switch to something nicer and kinder. The Spanish Mastiff, for example. I mean, look at this puppy. It's the epitome of all that's good and kind in the world. And yes, as you can see, there is a catch. The Spanish Mastiff is only sweet and harmless at a young age. As soon as he grows up, genes will take over, and the cutie will turn into a fighting and guard dog, not ready to forgive mistakes. Initially, this breed was bred as a farm one. It was intended to protect farmland and was used very actively. A little later, their use changed the vector towards hunting. It's said that Spanish Mastiffs could hunt even boars and bears. Well, and then the resulting guarding activity was also connected here. These dogs can grow up to 33 and a half inches at the withers and weigh up to 155 pounds. Nowadays, they're considered to be one of the most powerful dogs in principle. 
In addition to their impressive size, they also have a strong body structure. All these wrinkles that you can notice do not hinder the dogs at all. On the contrary, they help them at low temperatures. And as historians say, these wrinkles have another, even more important task. In the past, they served as natural armor against teeth. When some predator bit our guest, the fangs sank first into the fur and then into the skin. It was almost impossible to bite through to the muscles or even more so to the organs. Appreciate your time. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel.